Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the show. Uh, this is our fourth episode, and uh, we've been getting you know great feedback from you guys, the viewers at home. First of all, we want to start off by thanking all of our viewers for being with us right now, um, from wherever um, in the world you are, whether you're here where we're located in Canada, um, Vaughan, Ontario, to be specific, which is part of the Greater Toronto area, or anywhere else uh, you may be tuned in for. We want to thank you for being part of the show. Um, this show really is created for uh, various members of the community, uh, whether you're a youth and have questions on your mind, uh, whether you're somebody who uh, is really intrigued by our, today's topic and you've already been informed, or you're just somebody on a Friday night um, looking to uh, watch something online. Um, I, I, I truly hope that we're, we're able to make this uh, time that you'll be spending with us truly valuable to you. We really value your time and uh, thus we've created the show. Uh, you, you, it's all, again, the show is very, very interactive thanks to social media and some, some real-time feedback. Um, you can follow us um, at AfterShow. Um, you can email us um, AfterShow at gmail.com um, and I believe our Twitter handle is at underscore Apture. Um, so send it, feel free to send in it's our... Actually at Aperture underscore Show. Aperture underscore Show. Um, so feel free to send us your comments, your feedback, and uh, we'll be reviewing them in real time and we may be responding to some of you guys. People that have been sending us tweets, we have been following them. Again, we want to thank you as well. And we want to get straight away into today's show. We have a very, very interesting episode. Um, I don't want to give it away, but uh, we have been getting a lot of feedback, a lot of comments, a lot of interest from some of our followers on Twitter. And just in general, we've been getting a lot of feedback. And Shahid Sahib, I will let you take over. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. By the grace of Allah, we are having the fourth episode, as uh, uh, Safan Sahib has mentioned. And the topic of uh, this episode, as uh, we mass uh, publicized it in the last uh, couple of days um, to the Jamaas all over Canada, the topic is marriages and relationships uh, is the topic of this show, um, this episode. And it's going to be a two or three episode program. It's not going to be confined to one episode. Maybe two or three parts? Parts of this, uh, this, uh, this specific topic. So in, we'll, we'll start right, right from, the, from the beginning, um, like, like the relationships. So I just want to ask the first question to, um, to the uh, panel members which we have today. MashaAllah, we have Anik Chatta Sahib, Farhan Iqbal Sahib, Rabbi Silsla, Safan, you are the one. And Basil Sahib is also here with us today, I'm the sorry. director of the show. So uh, he's trying to direct us sitting over here. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so fr fr from the first uh, um, question which, which comes in mind, uh, especially, MashaAllah, this, this show is for the youth. And we have, mashallah, the youth is sitting over here. I want to ask, um, what is the environment, especially in this perspective when we are talking about the relationships in our colleges, schools, universities, and at workplaces? So just, just want to start the discussion from that point. Yeah, I think, I think we, we, we tend to formulate, especially living in this society, we, we tend to formulate um, relationships, at least, with the opposite gender, uh, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally, you know, haven't been gone to school um, in Canadian society, right? It's expected. It's almost, <clears throat> um, it can almost be very dangerous to not have a co-gender relationship. You know, people start to question um, your motives and intentions, right? So it's very, very um, almost influenced. You're very much encouraged um, to have uh, co-gender relationships. Um, and part of the reason why we, we uh, you know, we have Chetha Saab here on the show, who's a, who's a student, um, and uh, I'll, I'll ask him to speak to a little bit about uh, some of the state of affairs and some of the challenges maybe you, you may have dealt with personally. Definitely. Uh, well, I want to appreciate that you guys called me in for this, just to represent the students and what they have in their mind and what they go through. So first of all, I would say that it's an open environment for sure. And if you were to attend a university, and especially if you're taking a summer course, then it's basically a fantasy come true for one of the youths because it's really open, girls would wear skirts, and it's the amount of uh, problems that creates from a youth's point of view is just tremendous because he'll be looking at those girls, he'll want to flirt with them, and that's the environment that we grew up in. And that's exactly What about the boys? You said about the girls, they have the revealing clothes, but what about the boys? The what boys, do they do? It's, it's, the boys are covered. Like from but they're covered, but what they, what, what they try to do? Uh, and I think you bring up a great point, right? Like. The boys may not be wearing revealing clothing, but I feel like 
there's a certain tenacity as an alpha male to drive a certain car right. and attract certain mm -hmm. type of attention. Um, so it goes both ways, right? Absolutely, and yeah, I think, I think, and I think, I think that's uh, it. Really, comes down to seeking attention. It's a vicious, vicious circle, right? Right. It's uh, so. You have also gone to the first year of the university. <laughs> yeah? yeah, I was. Uh, I I did my high school here in Canada. And, and also, you went to the university for some time. Right? No, no, I I didn't go oh, to university okay. here. Yeah. The high school uh, environment. What is the high school? Yeah, the, that's what it was. You know, <laughs> there's this competition. A, there's this need uh, to feel important, uh, to feel recognized, to feel, uh, to feel accepted. Right. In in your in your circles uh, among your friends so that's one thing but what's the next level of that first of all of course you want to be attracted then what's what's next what happens introduction you, you basically find someone who will introduce you to that girl so what I mean by that is if I'm attracted to a girl mm -hmm. then I'm gonna ask one of my friends who might know her or I might have seen someone that I know who knows her so that's from there, I'm going to get an introduction, and then if I'm attracted to her, then I'm most likely going to start talking to her, start engaging more conversations in, with her, and then at one point, I will probably date with her. So, so date with her, right? Down. Yeah, that's what So the first down. step is you are getting attracted towards each other, exactly. then is the introduction, then mm -hmm. is the dating, and then sky is the limit. Right. What are the <laughs> possibilities? Me, but uh, what I'm just thinking is like when you say she's attracted, you get attracted to the person. What do you think is like the initial motive of a person, like as a, as a student or anyone, when you think about someone and you're attracted to them, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Is like, what, what do I want to do with this person? Is essentially, you just want to be like date. Like you said, this dating comes in naturally because you start talking to that person. What do you think, you know? Uh, it's usually what the person, what's, what's the first thing do you think that comes to the, to the person's mind? You know, like in this society, necessarily, like, you know, I want to make her my girlfriend or yeah. I want to make her just my new, because I, what I've noticed is it's not even relationships anymore, I think. Right. Yeah. So those days are gone. In other words, I have these, these programs in about 40, 45 jamaats, and I try to engage um, youth in this. And I ask very specific question, a very direct question, and I ask them a very direct answer. And the direct answer is the, the permanent relationship is kind of a history, part of the history. What is the phenomena right now, or what is, I should not use the word phenomena. My son said I use it so much in the, my last episode. <laughs> so what is the trend going on? What's, what's happening? Uh, well, the way I see it, if uh, I were to have a girlfriend, then I, I would use her to attract people to get me attention. Right. Because if a girl is very attractive and she's dating me, then they, my friend's going to give me respect for having that girl as my girlfriend. You're also inspiring them to have exactly. them to go to the same exactly. path, right? It's so like, in a oh, way... Oh, right, and how interesting is that, you know, I mean, and how almost backwards does it sound like you're using, you know, somebody to be able to only gain <laughs> further... Attention. Attention. Acknowledgement that you you know that that's your uh, that's somebody who you're in a relationship you know I, it's uh, <laughs> talking about that you know oh, it's almost a vicious cycle I mean I feel, I feel like it just sounds um, I think I think it's also uh, other than this I think it's also this fear of commitment that is uh, g you know uh, growing in the society statistically you know whether it's marriage or relationships um, because it has so much commitment and uh, you know there's so many TV shows and uh, media uh, who who actually fuel this fear and uh, think that you know if you if you if you get away from commitment you're living a free life uh, <coughs> by, you know a more uh, you have more freedom perhaps because you're not committed right and and that that's that's perfectly and that's what the show mm -hmm. in the uh, even you, if you have the you have the relationship, then there are shows which talk about the problematic relationships. Mm -hmm. We'll go into that discussion later on in this show. But the point is, there is such a uh, uh, process going on. <laughs> I'm trying to stop the phenomenon word again. Uh, that uh, there's a competition going of how many relationships you have, mm -hmm. and they feel proud <laughs> in that, pride in that. They have the pride. Is this right or wrong? Especially it's like a fashion uh, statement. Right? It is exactly. This is what I was going to say. Is that Nowadays, because we're in this, uh, you can call it disposable society or disposable era where we use something and we throw it away. And like, it, this is, this, right. is, uh, general, yeah. this is what I view it as, more or less. You know how we buy things, everything doesn't last, it doesn't last anymore. Like, we used to have products or something, they used to last for a long time. And you just have, we just, we get tired of something, I think, so fast. That's, yeah. and that's what I have seen in one of the tweets, very interesting, a very old couple. And um, they were together for so many years, and then the Twitter, in the tweet, it's mentioned that we belong to those, that era, in which we used to fix the things. We don't throw them out of the house when we had the problem. Nowadays, if you have a problem, you just throw and replace that person. Right, and and I, th I think a big part of that is, is really, the, I think it's become almost a cultural thing, right? This um, Canadian-American uh, culture, 
Um, I, the culture almost influences you right from high school to be, to have, you know, I think, I think it, gives, it gives you that status once you have your girlfriend, you know. Again, a, a lot of American movies will tell you, like, the guy in high school goes to become a football player and, 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 and the girl is a cheerleader and then they're, the, you know what I mean? So they've, they've instilled this fantasy in your head at a very early age. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's astounding how, you know, one, one of the more popular American television networks, um, MTV, one of the most popular TV show um, a few years back was about um, teenage girls who got pregnant. Um, but yet, it, it goes to, it tells you the state of the culture where shows like that have the highest rating, right? And then some of the younger kids that are watching, um, if anything, and then w later when they did research, that show was, if anything, counterproductive because there was this ongoing phenomenon that the girls were now going through that process just so they could get on the show, mm -hmm. um, which is, is a spiral of getting famous right. and finding, you know what I mean, and not actually thinking about the long-term consequences. So humility is not anything yeah. right now. Just to add to the, what Safan Sal just said, uh, when, I, when I was attending my university and I, you get to meet a lot of sort of different kind of people who come from different cultures, and there was one girl who said that her friend was pregnant at age of 14, right after high school. And that was, the, she had at least three of her friends, very good friends, like best friends, and then the three of them were pregnant at this time. And she says, she was discussing with me that, okay, uh, since I see those, my friends getting, being happy and having a child, I guess, uh, she gets motivated by that and influenced by that. She's like, oh, I wanna have a child too at some point in life. And because of these things, our youth get influenced because if these girls want to get pregnant, then they invite our youth. So it's an illicit relationship, right? Yeah, exactly. Out of the normal, normal relationship and then what we are. Mm -hmm. So these are the things which we are seeing in our society in which um, there is a competition going on to get yeah. the attention and to have more and more relationships and they feel proud of that. And our youth is being brought up in this mm -hmm. challenging society. We'll come to the solution later on. Mm -hmm. but. How all of this process have started? Where we said, like, where yeah, actually, started and why yeah, it started? You know, I, I, I took a course in, in high school, um, a history course, which talked about this. Uh, you know, the whole, uh, the, there was a se section uh, of that course where we discussed this and studied the history of how this uh, came into being. You know, he was talking about women wearing all these revealing clothings. Uh, you know, this wasn't something that just happened out of a sudden, right? It actually started after the First World War, uh, where you know women started wearing clothes. That, you know, before the First World War, their clothes would, in their bodies would be completely covered. They would even wear these hats to right. cover their heads and even something uh, to cover their face, uh, transparent. Be a piece of also were very controlled. Yeah. Exactly, and you know, after the First World War, they, there were these women that were considered really immoral women in the society, and all they had was uh, they would be wearing something up to their elbows, and the, the arm would be uncovered. That's the only thing, and their legs would only be covered below the uh, uncovered below the knees, right? And that was considered immoral in that society. And slowly, this process started growing after the First World War, and when the Second World War happened, after that, it uh, you know it. So I, I think I think I know exactly what happened. I was watching about two days ago. This is very interesting that you said that. Uh, about two days ago, I was watching a video, and it was it was a student, a graduate student, an MBA student, and she was going around. It was like one of those TED talks, but it's not. I, I don't know what it was. And uh, she was talking about how bathing suits for women, and she said that uh, when initially was it was it was introduced, it, it, nobody was wearing them, and they said they, they thought it was it was insane and it was for a, a bad woman, yeah. inappropriate. And then they said. They did recently did a study, a sur survey at um, I think it was uh, o Yale or I'm not exactly sure. They did a study at one of these universities, and they said what they did was they took a group of men, and they sat them down, and they showed them images of women that were uh, wearing uh, the revealing clothing, and then they showed pictures of the uh, of them uh, with modest clothing on, and what they noticed was that uh, there is the frontal frontal um, the the front lobe of the brain and I, I I'm so totally lost on exactly what it was it stopped working they said and that's where you give respect to something and you give and that's the the part when that when they shut that down men started uh, treating those pictures as objects 
So when they saw women that were yeah. revealing right. their clothes, so, but the point but is this is yeah, actually the this like this actually yeah, yeah. It, during the what happened is uh, d during the wars the proportion of men and women in society got disturbed. Mm -hmm. So there were fewer men as compared to women in the society uh, after the First World War Correct. and also after the Second World War. So and right away, there is very less gap between the two world wars also, right? Right. right. So huge and uh, as it uh, Khalifa to Masih Rabe Ramallah has talked about this in, in his book Islam's response to contemporary issues. And uh, he has talked about Germany and what uh, state it was in because, you know, Germany got the real impact of the war in, uh, after the Second World War. And this promiscuity, you know, you know really progressed exponentially uh, after the Second World War in Germany. And all these women were, st uh, you know, because they, were, they couldn't find men to marry. Polygamy is a solution, right? Right, right. And they couldn't find men to get married to, uh, and so they started wearing these clothes so they they could find men and you know to to uh, to satisfy themselves. Not only that, but also to earn the money. Because exactly. there is no, no sometimes there is not a, a smart profession to earn the money. Right. And right especially when, you, when, when, when a lot of Europe's economy was really down too. So you know it was it was. It was less than even right. the combination of, of, you know, the right jobs, but there were no jobs. There were right? no jobs also. There, 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 there wasn't really a, a <coughs> and not only that, I mean, you also keep in mind is Germany was going through a time where money had no value, right? And, 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 and that's where, you know, people will, will, will resort to some of those things, especially when millions and millions of men were, were, were being slaughtered by, by, by the month. So that's and Islam that's the gave a very interesting Yeah, that's the solution, solution right? in, in Islam is that you, uh, you can get married to more than one, one woman. And, and it's a civilized manner of, of dealing with a situation where you know, there are fewer men compared to women. And so the, those few men are allowed to marry more than uh, one woman. And uh, you know, in the Holy Quran, where Allah talks about polygamy, it talks about orphans as well, right? Where this whole concept of a post-war situation is discussed, where the Quran supports and encourages uh, uh, you know, the believers to, to take care of the orphans and to take care of the widows, right? Those women who have lost their husbands in a mm -hmm. war or who mm -hmm. cannot find anybody to get married. Mm -hmm. So right. this, is, this is how it is. Now, yeah, is. so we have covered what is happening right now in the society. The second thing is why and how it started. Now move to the next segment of this discussion, which is what are the impacts of this openness? We have talked about a couple of impacts already, teenage pregnancies and those mm -hmm. things, but there are some <coughs> more impacts, much more horrendous Impacts uh, which oh, we are psychological, seeing psychological, yeah, whether well, it's psychological or depression, but you know, Rabbi I think you you spoke about something very interesting. How Europe went into that state, but it never recovered from that, right? right? Mm. It turned it turned into a snowball effect, going downwards, only getting bigger and bigger. Um, and and I feel like it, it's a major contribution to what's happening in society today, right? Um, as as that starts to become a cultural norm, yeah. uh, you know, after many years of of, of seeing something that just goes on. Um, the, 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 the sad reality is now it's getting worse and worse. So they become habitual. Right. The point is, one of the things which I brought up and I have the discussions with the grade 10 Tirbiti uh, class and the students also, um, from the last couple of years I had this, this discussion, very interesting discussion, that the men and women both are now habitual. Yes. Habitual of multiple relationships. Mm -hmm. And when they get into the bond of marriage, then what happens? Because they're already so much habitual of multiple relationships, what will happen when they get married? Exactly. I, this what is, will happen? <laughs> they won't be satisfied. I mean, actually, they won't be satisfied. Actually, mm -hmm. I just came from a workshop <coughs> class, and it was interesting how a 15-year-old actually talked just about this. We were talking about marriage, wow. and he said this, and he's like, you know, when you have so many relationships, when you get married, then you start comparing. Okay, that one was better than this one, and you know, in so not many, only that, and, but and you're you not satisfied. So you want to have more relationships out exactly, of marriage. Exactly. Exactly. You can't stick to one person. You can't uh, have that commitment. You can, I think, I think it's satisfaction it's pretty, also. Right? It's pretty ironic how you know they say we're actually advancing and we're going to the future, and you know we're modernizing. And if we think about it, Islam actually just does the exact same. Like right now. Before they used to treat women as objects, and they, they used to you know just use them and you know constantly like that one woman to another, and we were the one that actually advanced. Hmm. So when you look at it now, yeah. they're going backwards and doing the exact they're same thing. They're, they're, they're using them as objects, and that's what uh, we were talking mm -hmm. also. Yeah, men is kawam, and kawam means powerful, and men is the one who can influence easily, and that's what they have done. They have corrupted the whole society because of their own pursuit, the sexual pursuit which they wanted to have. And and the uh, and the so far so called uh, you were talking about designer and bigger biggest designers yeah, they also. They call it they fashion the, and they give and these nice names. The name names. of fashion, exactly. name of the exactly. liberty. Right. They have actually they're imprisoning them. Yeah. And, and 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 that's what happened. So 
the point is back to that point not only women women and men both both are now so much used to so many relationships and they're not satisfied and they they want to go nowadays there are websites who are promoting illicit relationships mm -hmm. out of the marriage affairs and so on and there's tons because, of sites like that yeah and, and look at the spiral in which they are they're going through and look at the depression in which they are going through mm -hmm. because they want to market themselves to be equal to the other person as you were talking like i want to market myself in the university what happens yeah, exactly. right the same thing happens when you go to the workplaces or after the marriage you want to market yourself so that phenomenon is not staying in the colleges or the universities or the high schools that's coming to the workplaces also right and i feel like there's you're right that you know there's that need to market yourself but i also feel like society puts that pressure on you right. there's that expectation to market yourself right. when you're at work you're told that you have to stand out Right, right. right? Um, uh, uh, you know, I, I, you're right. I, I think that having that dominance in, in, in men, sometimes that may exude certain um, attractions in, 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 in women. You know, and, and you slightly touched up on that is, is, you know, fashion is almost considered this part of, you know, it's turned into, the, in our current culture, um, the, at the height of everything that is cool, um, where a lot of these designing label are men that design women clothing, mm -hmm. that women consider to be really fashionable and wearing, um, but yet it's coming from the mentality and being designed for the mentality of a man. You know, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's ironic that some of the most <laughs> successful um, designers in the world are men for right. women's clothing. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's how it is. But point, back to that point where, where, where we were talking about, like now they are not satisfied, and that's one phenomena or one, uh, one, one issue which we fa face. Now, the other thing is, they are not confident of each other. The reason is because they don't know how many relationships he or she had before. Mm -hmm. How many, are they still having one relationship? Because and they're always in depressed mode, even when no they trust. are in the marriage relationship, because there is no trust. Mm -hmm. So look at the depressed, uh, depressed uh, functionality of a family. Yeah, the dysfunction of uh, Dis the family, of the family. And, and you know domestic issues. And yeah. then goes to the next level of depression <clears throat> within the children and single parents and and financial issues and all those things which are destroying going into the family. This, this destroying whole thing, right? the family. Yeah, I, I, why, I just yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. That's why that there's more therapy in white culture than in like in Islamic culture. So just because of, to avoid these things. Like Islam teaches you the right way, right? And these white individuals who actually go it's through not this white only, it's everyone. It's, it's, it's Western society, like, everyone. Like, Western society. Yeah, yeah. Everyone it's Browns a are going <laughs> like crazy. I I have seen and I know right. they, they're trying to compete. They're trying to fit right. into the society, right? And that is what is happening. Um, our youth face that also, like the, the, within the Jamaat, day in day out. So it's not only it's everybody is getting into that now, right? And one thing we know is fact: right? promiscuity doesn't see color. Right. Um, yeah. a, 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 I think it's all your state of mind a lot of the time. Right? Right. I think it's, it's just like that. What I see and understand, you know, you're talking about how people aren't confident and they have these either unfaithful to each other. I really think it comes down to is this, it's 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 really not something that you. Uh, it's just a wrong take to it, more or less. Hey, for from my from my perspective, is that they have the wrong priorities when they go into these relations. I think all of these people, they're like, especially when they're brought up, they they usually don't have a parent, one single parent, and, and you know. And they're brought up with not much guidance. And we have a perfect guidance from Islam right. and so on and so forth coming in. What happens is, so they, they don't know what the priority is, what they're looking for in a relation. So they'll go into a relation, but they'll only think is that, you know, the, 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 there's only the inti intimacy, and that's pretty much it. And, you know, just the materialistic ways. There's mm -hmm. nothing else that really guides their relations, and that's how I think it ends. Something very interesting, actually. I was talking to one of the person uh, is living in Peace Village. He was saying, like, in Pakistan, it's everywhere, you know. In used to the days when he was young, um, there were boys always, you know, try to chase girls and all those things. And then he said, I used to tell to the boys that uh, you are corrupting the mothers of the future. Don't you see what you're doing? Because if you corrupt a mother of the future, what about the future generations then? Mm. So that is what is happening right now. And this is w which we are living and we are seeing the impacts of that. One more thing, That's very why, important. That's you know, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, is a lot about education of women, and we take that very seriously. Yeah. I, you know, I, I've, I've been to Qadian myself. There were separate uh, areas allocated for dars, for women only, right? As Khalifa to Masih Sani, he used to give dars to women only because he was so concerned about, and he has spoken on the subject so many times that he was concerned about the education of women mm -hmm. uh, because it affects the next generation. Right. 
And uh, the, another impact of this phenomena is the health. Yeah. Right. What we're facing in the that, world right that's, now. That's an right. obvious And I think that's a very interesting uh, topic, you know, because, uh, again, I think health, health <laughs> can be tremendous. It's going into health right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, but I think that, that it's, it, 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 it's, it's getting, because we were just talking about the snowball effect where it's getting worse and worse, and right. I feel like it's now getting to a point where, you know, we're, we're seeing the highest numbers of STDs oh, um, coming out. Where we're, seeing, we're seeing some very, very <clears throat> um, terrible long-term effects, um, both... And not just in your physical health, but then in your within your emotional health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are having, starting to have more and more commitment issues, trust issues, um, uh, and you just touched on that, right? Like even once they once they once they do find the right partner, and it, they may be married, there is a huge sense of doubt, which starts to eat up each That's, other. Yeah, but the, the other phenomenon, like physical health, also look at that. It's it's eating up the dollars and the uh, healthcare costs, mm -hmm. and as well as the people and human being, we may not need, you know, and that's something very interesting, somebody have said that we may not need a world war. We are going <laughs> to ex extinct ourselves. We do not need anyone else. We do not need a wrath. This wrath is, and always the wrath comes because of our own selves, our own deeds. That's why we talk about the pollution, the environmental pollution, but this is also a pollution, a bigger pollution because this pollution is causing that pollution. Yeah, it's state of mind. Uh, I was, I was, individuals. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yes, I'm just uh, simply adding to what you said. It's definitely affecting all the individuals because they interact with each other. And it's basically like I come from a scientific background, so I know how these things work. Right. So it's like a virus basically that enters the body and then it's able to corrupt the body in no minute, like in no second. It's, it's able to replicate right away. About, uh, I think, yeah. two, two, three years ago, I was Wait. reading up on uh, statistics and they said one in four teenage girls mm -hmm. has an STD. Wow! And, yeah, I, I, and I was, I was, I was just blown away. I Where? Was, I tried, Here? Or uh, someone else? It was a general statistic. It was a general statistic okay. that they, was, they were posting, and I think it was about the states. But when I read that, I was just blown. Away. I did my research, and I, it was actually true. And I was like, one in four teenage girls, is that, that was a very, very striking number to me. But when I did find out, I redid my research on it. And it was a very shocking Probably number same to for that, the yeah. boys as well. Same <laughs> for the boys also, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, because, you know, I, like, well, here's the kind of conflict that comes in. It's, I understand boys, you know, kind of, they're, they're equally a part of it. What happens is girls usually get, I think, because they're, the objective is because they're the one that are being real, real right. more, right? Yeah. But boys are, as we mentioned about, <laughs> we, we cannot, men is the one who's driving exactly, these things exactly, and true, making true, this happen. True, and that's, true, yeah. right. So nobody is less, everybody's right. contributing it's a problem, their role. It's, it's no same competition problem for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think, you, like you mentioned, it's a road that no matter which turn you take, it, it goes to a dead end. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, you see certain extreme uh, sense of it which lead guys to homosexuality, which in turn, Terrible health effects are being uh, brought forward yeah. by the not the, only the, STDs but many yeah other scientific problems. communities yeah. come out and gone like this is a, a, astounding numbers of, of terrible diseases. We are going to extend ourselves, not nobody else, right? <laughs> Precisely, and and you know no matter you, so again it, it, it's a road that leads to a dead end no matter how you approach it and and how you may have your own self explanation of the way you're doing it is right, right. and there's no justification, right? It's, uh, yeah. so it's, it's, everyone's it's, a, a victim, so basically. Yeah. Right, so with that said, um, we are going to take a quick break. Um, so stay with us, and uh, we, have a, we have some really interesting uh, video clip for you uh, speaking to the topic, and we'll be right back. Um, I just wanted to, um, we looked at one angle of society where there are those that look for short-term pleasures, but there's also an angle of society, maybe minute, but um, I, I'm only saying this because I have a friend who goes through the same situation where he says that I am dating, but I have good intentions while I'm dating the person that I'm with, that in the future when I'm ready, I will marry her. So what do we say to that? What do we say to the people like those that say that, Joe, you know, I have good intentions, that I am with this person, but I don't want to throw it away. I really do commit to this person. I want to marry this person one day. So what do we say to people like that? So the very concept of dating. Back to the first question. That's the million dollar question right there. I'll tell you, but I'm going to answer the, the, the question, two, both questions with the same answer. He's setting a trap. Your friends are setting a trap. Okay? It's the benchmark trap. I'll give you an example. The first car you ever owned was a 2011 uh, Z06 Corvette, okay? And the next car you bought after that was um, uh, Cobalt because you had to get rid of the Corvette because you couldn't afford it. Every car you own after the, that Corvette is going to be, the Corvette's going to be the benchmark. You're going to compare that next car to the Corvette, 
Okay? What happens in the dating process is, guess what happens? Every girlfriend is going to be compared to another girlfriend. And sooner or later, they're not going to measure up. And even your friend, after they get married, is going to compare his wife to what she was like when she was his girlfriend. And that dating process is a fantasy. It's not reality. It's for fun, it's for enjoyment, it's here and there, entertainment, value, etc. The purpose of a date is an entertainment, it's an, it's an entertainment issue. That's not the reality of life. So the trap is set. Your friend is setting a trap. He's going to compare his wife to what she was like when she was dating. Your friends are going to compare all their girlfriends to other girlfriends, and they're not going to add up, especially after they marry somebody, because marriage is reality. It's the difficulties and trials of life. As soon as you compare someone in the circumstances of marriage, to a person in the circumstances of dating, the poor person that's your wife just lost. And you start looking down upon that person and start criticizing them. And if you listen and watch TV shows where people are going for counseling, watch Dr. Phil when he's got a couple in there that he's counseling. They'll always ask the same question. Why can't it be like when we were dating? Mm -hmm. Right? It can't be like when they were dating. Dating's not reality. It's fantasy. It's a, it's a dream. And that's the trap our entire society is setting. So and that's having a very negative effect on marriage. So it sounds like it's almost like a spiral just going downwards. Down and down. Welcome back. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed that segment uh, by Atal Wahid Sahib, who, uh, you know, speaking to uh, some, right in, in line with what we were speaking to. And uh, we've had a very, very interesting discussion before we went into that video. Um, I actually have my uh, smartphone device in my hand and it's been buzzing the entire show. So we know that there's been a lot of questions and comments uh, that have been coming in. We did want to de dedicate a segment and a portion of the show to, to discuss some of those questions, concerns, comments. There definitely has been some interesting one. I, I can I can see uh, Marubi Sab peeking into a few. I can see Shad <laughs> Masur Sab has his has his phone in his hand, and you know I'm guilty as charged myself, um, <laughs> as I'm I'm actually you know uh, have some questions. So I'm just gonna read out the question, and then uh, we'll we'll maybe we can address some of the concerns. Um, one of the questions that came in is uh, from at Islamic Light. Um, and it says, what is Islam's view on bride and groom talking, texting, messaging each other before marriage? Should they do it? Should they not? And why not? It's, it's a very interesting question. Uh, I think so we can take this question in the second episode okay. because we are going to talk about the marriage scenarios. Okay. And we are going to invite um, some more people who have the experience of going through that process. Sure. Because three of the bachelors are sitting here. <laughs> one, two, and three. <laughs> Maybe they want an answer too. <laughs> right. I, I can probably tell it by my experience by observing other people, but I oh, guess oh, I'll okay. let you ex I experts. I you're going to tell your experience. <laughs> no, no, I will tell my experience. <laughs> right, and for some of the viewers at home, as was mentioned earlier, in case you just joined us later on to the show, the show is a three-part series. Um, the first part, we're just looking at um, you know, relationships and society and culture, and uh, what is the right way. And in our next part, we'll look at marriages. And, and I think the part three, we'll really talk about the marriage life itself. Um, and so marriages, and that's what I wanted to uh, just uh, put some, some, some points there. Now, in this show, we have talked about what are the impacts and the issues, if the, the things which were happening around us. The solution to those issues, to our youth, and that's what we are trying to promote to parents also, because Tayyip Pirzada asked in one of the tweets that what are we doing to our parents to educate about that, that our youth must get, edu um, get timely married. So all of the solution of these issues is a timely marriage of our youth, because they're exposed to this, all of this horrendous phenomena, and in order to safeguard themselves, the perfect solution is a timely marriage. We'll get into the timely marriage discussion in the next episode. What, how, why? Um, and what are the impacts? And in that, uh, we will address this question. Sure. Hopefully, inshallah, because that is prevalent to that that uh, that that show. Discussion. So, so stay discussion. tuned. Your question will be answered. Right. Uh, so you, we, yeah. Yeah. But I know that there's a there's a tweet that you. So Tayyib, yeah, Tayyib asked, what are we doing for the parents to educate them? So what we are doing with the parents, we have that's why I mentioned about we had Ijlas uh, Sate Am, the general body meetings in about 43 jamaats all over Canada already, mm -hmm. by the grace of Allah, in this year. Uh, we are just winding up these sessions now because one year this year was the focus. The focus was timely marriage, 
and we had the article in MDA Gazette. In MDA Gazette, yeah. we have the article on some other topics related marriages, and we have a whole issue uh, of the MDA Gazette, which was published based on this uh, topic of the marriage and after life after marriage. So we are doing that, and we will we are covering that in the Friday sermons also. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things going on all around, and inshallah, we'll keep on talking and keep on promoting these things. But the point is. So this topic is timely marriage, uh, is, uh, this week is this, the next week is timely marriage, and the third uh, episode will be, inshallah, about the um, situations after the marriage, how to, how to go for a good life after marriage. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that also, inshallah. Responsibilities. Responsibilities and, and how to share the responsibility, how to have a good life. And um, so, Safan, by any other question and comment, actually, the Twitter is, is yeah, really yeah, busy. Yeah. You know, actually, um, it, there, there's a tweet that just literally um, echoes what you were just saying, and it says, you know, what actions is Jamaat taking to promote early marriages um, and, and events that benefit, uh, which Hazur has emphasized. Um, I think that this, uh, this very show is a testament to, 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 to the types of, uh, of events that we want to continue to do, and we are doing, um, to really d discuss some of these topics, right? It's, uh, you know, as to certain degrees, it almost feels like one of those taboo topics, but uh, I think that it's important that... Uh, right, we have started talking. And that's a huge feedback came from the uh, from the youth. In right. in those jilasatiyam, actually, we are inviting everyone: atfal, nasrat, youth, boys, girls, parents, men, women, everyone. Because we want to put this thing in front of them uh, as open discussion and uh, as a challenge which we are which our youth is facing. So we want to work for the youth. Mm -hmm. Just to add to what yeah. just add to what uh, Shahid Bhai was saying. Uh, a lot of times I've heard from my friends uh, who also attended university and they would say that I would like to get engaged at this point at least, but my parents are not ready. Right. So my question to you would be, well, how do you encourage uh, their parents to actually get them at least engaged? So that's once again come into the discussion the which we are going to the timely marriage in this next okay. episode. But because the reason is because we will float the discussion yeah. and we'll address because there are questions also came about the conversion, if you have the conversion. So those questions are morally more towards that. So that's why we'll sort out those questions which are relevant to that topic. Sure. And we'll sort out the questions for the next. So for sure. this topic which we had, the impacts of the society, mm -hmm. somebody tweeted like, how much money you are getting, you guys are getting. <laughs> so right. we're getting topic. paid uh, per show. It depends how many sponsors we get. <laughs> we had the Coca-Cola um, board. Oh, we had it or... somewhere. Oh, yeah. We can't right, say I that. Think, I think another, another tweet that I, <laughs> yeah, I do want to go to another tweet. Right. I assume this is from a very concerned member who uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, for himself or he's asking on the behalf of somebody, but at Bilaval A asks, um, what is uh, what is Jamaat's view right. on uh, students converting non MD girls and marrying them? Are we allowed to do so? Um, and and you know maybe you can shed some light on that. Ruby <laughs> Once again, students, it's more to the next yeah, week, but yeah, 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 right. uh, students converting somebody for the sake of marriage. Well, I, well, 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 Obliged I mean, to, I think, is the marriage. I think, I think the concern is whether, whether student or not. Um, I think for the sake of marriage. Yeah. I think conversion itself is something that we should all, uh, you know, try to get and uh, you know uh, preach our faith to as many people as uh, as possible uh, when we are in school or university or college. Uh, but you know, conversion uh, for the sake of marriage, obviously, is not appropriate. It's with the right intention. It's such a it's such a beautiful process, conversion. Right. And uh, Ruth said once actually, bo to boys, are you not? Wh why you're not doing the to the boys? Why are you doing the to the girls? Uh -huh. Where the boys are? Uh -huh. And same thing for the girls. Why you're not doing the tablet for to, with the with the girls? Conversion, why, conversion like, itself is for the, it's for, the sacred process. Allah, for the sake of Allah, right? right. Uh, not for like the sake of the person. Bring someone uh, closer to Allah. That is what. But would you be uh, obliged to marry that person? Like, let's suppose that uh, you do, you know, exactly. Would it right. be yeah? Next week. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just saying. It just, it just comes all down to the same thing. It's very hard to define it sometimes right, yeah, because right. there's questions that are coming from the youth, and right, it's, right. it's directed to the youth. No, no, yes. And, uh, yes. It's, it's so is the representative of the youth. <laughs> I'm here, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. I, guess, I guess I can put up a question. I don't know if it would fit in with the next episode. If it does, then you know, Murabi Sahib doesn't have to answer that. So a lot of times I've heard that uh, what if someone has a girlfriend and he agrees, they mutually agree that they protect their chastity, so shouldn't he be allowed to have a girlfriend? You know, this, uh, this is a good question. Uh, actually, um, uh, it is addressed by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. He said that when a man and a woman are alone, the third being that is next to them is Satan. 
right? Mm -hmm. So how much can we predict such situations? How much can we stay committed to being chaste? What happens between a man and a woman? There is this attraction. It's always going to be there. Why deny it and, and, and make uh, certain goals that you know you're not going to be able to achieve? So, you know, uh, uh, th 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 this to me at least, or as, as far as Islam, uh, the p uh, perspective from Islam is concerned, is, is next to impossible. You know, mm -hmm. maybe 2%, 1% of the society can actually manage such a goal, but 98, 99% of people cannot manage such a, such a commitment that, okay, we, we will stay friends until marriage, and, uh, but we can meet and we can do all these things. But like that just comes under, like, you just can engage, though, like, on an Islamic level, then that, that should be the solution to that, right? More or less. No, not even engaged. Uh, they have to do nikah. No, like you know, nikah, right? engage. I'm saying just take Islam it to the Islamic is process. It's not about like having long engagements and uh, you know staying uh, engaged yes. for so many years mm -hmm. and then meeting and almost having a married life and not actually getting a nikah done. So what is wrong with getting a nikah done? You know, well, what is uh, why 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 would you? I, I think for for if I speak from the, for the youth, they they say that we're not ready and that there's a many factors that come in, but that comes into the timely marriage part as well, right? Yeah, like right. I, I just really you know. I think we need to yeah we yeah. need to get right. to the move. I'm I'm going to read out a few a couple yeah, other comments from Twitter, and then yes. I think that there's been a wonder, wonderful comment, maybe, and, and a slight question at the end from at the Seif Ahmed. Uh, things uh, to be looked for, or sorry, I think the question is um, some of the things that should be looked for in a in a life partner should be uh, piety and parda, and right. that goes for both, you know, male and female, and female, and female right? Yeah. What is the Jamaat doing to promote some of these priorities? So I think when Hazura Anwar bin Abdul Aziz was here, he gave so many instructions uh, through his addresses, and uh, he talked about this, and there was an impact too. He, uh, if you listen to the khutbah after Hazur left Canada, he shared some stories of how people were impacted by by his uh, his, his instructions when he is having his sittings with with youth, and you should go and watch them on MTA. He has these yeah. uh, sittings with youth, with boys and girls, and he talks about these issues right. directly. Uh, and you know this person. There's a lot of impact. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of impact on the boys yeah. and the girls both, and they are in the company of the Azul. Uh, Azul. Right. And they are, right. And there's a, there's actually one. yeah there's actually another question, and I think I'm going to address it to you because you were previously Sadr Khudam al Amdia for Canada, and it's a, a, a question pertaining to Khudam, but maybe you can speak a little bit to the curriculum. And the question is from at um, Hania M underscore, and it says um, a lot of efforts from Lajna in order to educate women on marital issues. Uh, what are the Khudam doing uh, to, to... I was trying to avoid this question. <laughs> <Right. that. laughs> but maybe, maybe from your past life uh, you can <laughs> shed some light. Just, just, uh, no, there, um, there are a few things going on. We have been, uh, that's what I mentioned, like this project started Time in Marriage three years ago. Actually, now it's the fourth year. We started these sessions with the boys, uh, the real talk style sessions, but uh, not on the, on the camera, without the camera in the different regions of Canada. And girls on the Lajna side, they have started the same style. Um, we have been doing now, as I mentioned, 40, 45 Jamaats. Every Jamaat you have to go. It's not regional based. It takes a lot of effort, but now you have much more attendance because you're going each, each Jamaat uh, all over Canada. So it's bringing up. The third very important thing which we are doing is we have started the premarital counseling, which is a mandatory before uh, the marriage. And we'll touch that in the third episode. That, that, so there are things going on. Uh, and there are more things in Istama, there are some speeches. And one more thing which has been re requested by Sazza Khudam al a very interesting part, is Lajna are the mothers of the boys also. So that's a very interesting thing which the Lajna is doing. They're addressing in, a, in an indirect way and helping the Khudam also by addressing the, the mothers of the boys. Right, great. Okay. And, and I know I had promised that that would be the last tweet that we'll read out for the right. six, strictly for time, but I feel like we should give an opportunity to one last one. Right. If I have is your permission. Is it by Safwan? It is not by me. <laughs> I've been only reading We're going to have to collect all the tweets right now. Right. You know, right. Like just line them up. Yeah. Yeah. So the tweet is from at AJI Topia. Um, and it, the, the tweet is that what is the Jamaat doing to promote male parda? For example, I mean, you know, you can, one can have a beard, but. What are some of the actions or things that Jamaat is doing to encourage, you know, guys uh, practice? Lower their gaze and then right. do not look. Right. Of course, one Tawseef has mentioned very interestingly that this is all because of the relationship of Almighty Allah. That's why the illicit relationships and all those things are happening. So the most important thing which Azul has brought our attention so many times in the, in the sermons and in today's also is the self-reformation. 
whether you are a man or a woman, both are equal as Quran mentions. And it's, it's a competition uh, uh, of the go piety. Listen, go listen to today's uh, Friday sermon. I mean, that, that, it will, it will that covers everything that is related to this issue. Right, right. Azur has uh, addressed this, especially this year, in a number of khutbah. No, no. uh, so I would highly recommend today's khutbah. Right, and I think uh, I, I, I once heard Khalifa Rabi being asked this question, and he answered it beautifully, saying, you know, a parda is not just a girl wearing a hijab or a guy having a thick beard or a certain way, you know, or have, lowering your gaze. A parda is really your state of mind, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's something you have, to you, you have to train yourself on and, 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 and abide by that training, you know, uh, mentally. You're, you're always tuning right. in with your parda. Yeah. There's, there's this uh, thing of just stemming mm -hmm. off from parda. is like a lot of people just say it's, it, it comes down to, I think they wrongly use the term, you know, like, you know, it's our own intentions and how we do it. If they don't like, when it comes to prayer, like, we know we're doing the right prayer internally, but they don't want to do it outside. I, I don't know, maybe they say we're not ready and stuff. Those, there's a lot of those little factors that come up when it comes That's to prayer and all that And once stuff, again, yeah. these are the, <laughs> what you say, uh, I have sometimes excuses also, which comes from yeah, all, my insight. So anyways, we'll now have the, right, we, so, we need so, to wrap up the Right, so, so with that said, um, we, again, continue to send us your tweet. Even if it doesn't get read out in the show, we will respond. Um, you know, I, I know the challenges, some of the questions, they really are terrific questions. Um, but we also don't want to give away the content of our up and coming episodes. And we want to, you know, save some of that material as well. So please continue to send us your tweets. They're truly appreciated. Um, and, and, it, and it truly lets us know that you know, you're engaged. We're going to go into our next segment. Uh, uh, Jamaat Ahmadiyya Canada recently held a wonderful event inside Awani Tahir, which is located not too far from where we're sitting right now. Um, and uh, it was a science fair. Um, uh, the, the name of it is Abdul Salam Science Fair. Um, and, and, and it's truly to encourage more and more uh, youth to, to bring their ideas forth to bring their discoveries forth and, and truly challenge themselves as, as, as was led by a trailblazer like Dr. Uh, Professor Abdul Salam Saib. So we're going to go roll right into that clip. We hope you enjoy it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Abdul Salam Fair is being organized every year in Canada. And this fair basically recognizes the achievements of Professor Dr. Abdul Salam, who uh, got Nobel Prize in 1979 in physics. Uh, the other purpose of this fair is to inculcate in the minds of our youths to, uh, to achieve uh, their scientific curiosity by choosing uh, the subjects in science while they are pursuing their career. So Dr. Abdusam Fair provides a forum where these children uh, they can come, they can demonstrate what they have learned in science, as well as they can exchange ideas among other uh, young scientists who are present here. So this, uh, these are the two purposes uh, which we are using in order to explore the uh, scientific ideas among the children, in order to uh, motivate children to take uh, uh, science as their field of study. Hi there, I am here at the Dr. Abdus Salam Science Fair 2013 and standing beside me is Dr. Stephen Julian from York University, one of the chairs in the physics department. Um, Dr. Julian, you've been here before, is that right? Yeah, I was here two years ago. Yep. How, uh, what have been your impressions uh, this year? Well, I just, I love this event. I liked it two years ago and I like it now. And what I particularly like is how much uh, enthusiasm there is for science amongst the, uh, the kids here. What's something interesting, uh, you know, that you've seen this year, maybe uh, in comparison to, to, to last year, uh, something that maybe you raised your eyebrows? Well, <laughs> the most amazing thing is the, the demonstration over there where they've taken a cockroach and they've inserted an electrode down its antenna and they can control its movement with a little chip. I mean, I, I'm astounded at that. But we won't share that with the ethics department, right? Well, maybe not. I don't know about insects. There's a certain level, but yeah, that's really something. Um, Dr. Julian, uh, Dr. Abdus Salam is, is one of the, 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 the role models of, of this community and of this science fair that's named after him. When you were growing up, who was, who was a role model to you um, as you were you know, studying sciences? 
Well, to be honest, I spent quite a bit of my career in Cambridge, England, at the Cavendish Laboratory, and that's where Abdus Salam did his PhD, and he returned there as a professor for a while. And he's a role model for everybody in physics, actually. He's a very impressive, not just a scientist, but the work that he did for society, I think, impresses everyone. So, to be honest, he's one of the role models that everyone in physics has. Uh, you know, these days, uh, Dr. Julian, a lot of the children uh, have, you know, mobile devices and, and tablets and technologies everywhere. Um, how, can, how can we make uh, the, the young children, the students, be a little bit more aware of the, the technology, sorry, the science and the technology that goes into things like that, the things that we don't really think that much about? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not totally sure. Uh, there are, uh, there's a, a website. Some of the people I work with are at the University of Florida, and they've put together a website that basically is an expanded view of an iPhone, and it describes all of the physics that goes into all of the electronics. So if you look around on the internet, you can find some of that information, maybe. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Julian, for being here, and uh, we hope you come and visit us next year again. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, there's a student that made um, a cockroach. Uh, is exactly what it is. I think Murphy's outside, or when no, it, no, you didn't see it. it was what they did is they took um, uh, and, and, electrodes, and electrodes, and electrode. put it on the cockroach, and they were controlling it with their iPhone app. We were supposed to have that in the clip. I don't know if a guy went in there, and I was waiting on that, and as I got so tuned, zoned into right. it. Right. So, so we, we we hope that you enjoyed that clip. Um, and if you know somebody in your family, in your social circle, your friends somebody who is very scientific and, 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 and enjoys um, that as, a, as, as their academic approach. Encourage them to get involved with the fair. Um, happens every year, but that doesn't mean that you have to come up with the idea right before the show, uh, for right before the science fair. Um, so start thinking about it. We would love to see more and more ideas. There were some fantastic ones this year. And, uh, but I, we, even though we said we're not going to take any more Twitter requests, we have been getting bombarded with questions that so we've mutually had made an executive decision <laughs> it was me. To, to allow a few more questions. And uh, there are some very tough questions. So we don't want the audience at, feel, at home to feel like we're you're maligning any of the tough questions. We're going to definitely address them. Um, ideally, we want to stick to the topic uh, of today. But one of the questions that comes in from at um, Sadia Sami 1, um, are you planning on having any Lajna panelist uh, for this topic of marriage, um, a, a, a female's view viewpoint would obviously be ideal for, for the, our uh, female uh, viewers at home. So uh, what, what I'm doing actually, I'm already in uh, constant touch with the National Secretary Sahiba Tarbiyat uh, Maraza Khan Sahiba and uh, inshallah we'll see how we can make them the part of the show through the, through the phone or so, some other services. So we'll, we'll look into that inshallah. Okay. And, and, and I believe we can definitely... I was thinking the same actually yeah. a couple of days ago. Right. So it's, it's came, yeah. And, and if you have a question, feel free to send it to us and we'll definitely get it to um, uh, Manoza Saiba to be able to maybe even answer some of the some of the questions. Don't worry, Lajna. And uh, <laughs> and uh, one of the questions, which is which is actually a really interesting question, and Marbi Saiba, if you don't mind, I will bring it to your attention. Uh, the question is, it, and it comes from uh, AJIT at AJITOPIA. It says again, why is it that the first question? on Rishta Nata department asks, or on their form, and I'm, again, I haven't seen the form, so I can't speak to this, but uh, are Who essentially- You have not seen the form? Sorry? You have not seen the form? <laughs> Let me show it to you right now. Sorry, Go I, and see. I'm making a profile for you. I, 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 <laughs> you set yourself you up for that. <laughs> so okay, I, continuing with my question, <laughs> yes. is uh, why do they s start superficially? For instance, <coughs> one of the first few questions uh, speaks to your income, or what type mm -hmm. of education you have. You know, the hadith uh, that we talked about earlier, that the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that you know, there are a number of things that you look for in marriage, and the one that you should look for is diniha, uh, it's the religion of your spouse, and uh, you know that that is one thing that is the that is the priority that uh, you know when you're doing a, when you're looking for a rishta, you should find someone who is the most pious that you can find. But the word deen does not stop there. The word deen, you see Arabic is a beautiful language. It has m many meanings to the same word. So the word deen is not just religion, but also look for someone who is compatible with you. You know, in, in fiqh we have the word uh, hamkuf, right? So uh, look for someone 
uh, who can who can who can uh, get along with you easily. You know that is another thing that is highly emphasized in our khutbat as well in in fiqh and when we talk about this subject. That's what we talk about. So you know there are certain factors that can help you determine who is compatible with you, uh, and education is part of it. And uh, income, uh, well, not income, but you know the wealth of a person. Uh, is part of it, you know. Uh, if you if you are coming from a background where you have, you know, in Pakistan, for instance, you have uh, uh, ten cars and you have these servants and you have a lifestyle, you know, you get you know, your breakfast and your the lunch generous. and all those things served to you, right? And you know that person it w would find it very hard to get along with someone who is from you a very have poor. To be at a very high taqwa level, <laughs> and that taqwa exactly. level is, I mean, it's, despite of the joke, is Hazrat Majan Right, right. From right. which background she came from, yeah. like servants and everything, and when he, she came to Hazrat Masih Muhammad Salatu Wasalam, small room, house, it's only one cot in the whole house, right? Right. right. So, but you need then that level of yeah. taqwa yeah. where you can accommodate. So that's why it goes hand in yeah. hand. Yeah, it goes hand in hand, and you know, taqwa is obviously the number one priority right. that you should have. Number two and number three, and all, all, all these other things that you can look into if you want uh, to find someone, and somebody who has a PhD. You know, would would prefer to get along, would give, have a better chance with someone who is highly educated as compared to someone but who's not. I want to share one thing here. Um, actually, I should not. I should keep it for them. But <laughs> I'm I'm just getting into that. The point is, there used to be men which who were very educated, and women who were not very educated. Look right. at our ancestors, our nannies, dadis, or 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 our grandmothers, or our mothers even. They found it. Like they, 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 they found the compatibility, they lived nicely. But once you go the other way around, like women is more educated and men is not very educated, we need to come up with the compatibility over there right. also. Mm -hmm. We need to find out right. that, that compatibility somehow, somewhere. Because in Jamaat, this is another issue which is coming up again and again, that our girls are now get, getting more educated or boys are not. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't mean boys don't need to, boys have the highest priority to get educated, they must get educated. Right. But in some cases, if they need to be, then as I mentioned, you need to work for your circumstances instead for sometimes they keep on waiting for the best partner. Right. And this, this right. You know, the, the, uh, basically what, what I was trying to explain is why these questions have to be there on right, the form. Right. Uh, you know, to yes, get yes, that yes, basic information, yes, that right. basic information uh, has to be obtained and there are reasons for that. That was right. what I was trying to explain. Right. And, and, and again, you know what, I, I know if we keep uh, going to these Twitter questions at the pace that they're coming, we'll be here <laughs> for a while. This will fast. Right, right. so this will be, Marshall. this will our, officially be our last one. Right. That, oh, and, then, and, then, <laughs> and, 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 and yes, yes. I, 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 I promise that. There are some connections working there. Right, some, some, some <laughs> of the questions are so good, I, I don't want to dismiss them. Um, and then, so, so the, the last one is, and it comes from at um, HMEH, and uh, it says, uh, there needs to be uh, more education provided for parents um, right. about marriage and its purpose. Um, Jamaat should organize workshop for parents. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it goes on into a second tweet. It says, because my parents have superficial standards that they get carried into, that sometimes get carried. And, and, and Mr. I think that this question is truly, really important for you because I know, uh, knowing, you know, having us, having a personal relationship, this is something that uh, is very much your topic. Right. So inshallah, we'll, we, are, we are look, working on that. And inshallah, we'll keep on working on that, especially um, we are going to have that covered in the Ansarullah also in the coming days. So we are going to handle and tackle it from the different angles. Ansarullah had some sessions, Tarbiti workshops couple uh, last year, in which they specifically talked about this thing. But we need to handle it more from the superficial status point of view. And that in itself is a huge topic. So we'll inshallah address that. OK, wonderful. Well, we hope that uh, some of your questions were answered, um, and and we will continue to answer them in the in the upcoming episodes. I know Shad Masrusab doesn't want to give away some of his his content from the upcoming episodes. <laughs> no way. Um, and uh, but he's very that's, strict about it. Yes. Uh, but that takes us to uh, one of the most popular segments of the show over the episodes. It's turned into uh, Shahid Masrusab's favorite tweets. Um, nobody has any influence over them. Um, it's his Especially own. Especially Safwan has no influence. So I, uh, you know, we we've come to a conclusion that um, uh, I'm definitely in, in one of those people. And Shahid Musa, I'm going to ask you to take it away. Right. Let's hear your favorite tweets okay. of the last two weeks. I'll try to do it quick because we are going like, Alhamdulillah, because of the interest of the audience, we have gone more than one hour. We try to wrap it around 45, 50 minutes of this show, but Mashallah, uh, but because of the great interest of the viewers. 
So the first tweet which I'm going to talk about is um, by Amber Hacker. We lost a giant. No one, and there's a quote. Quote started with, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion, Mandela. Mm -hmm. So Nelson Mandela passed away. Uh, in al he, he was a great personality. Um, we, we, um, we can learn a lot from, from his personality. And it was a very interesting qu uh, quote of, of Mandela. So that's what I wanted to share. And then uh, there is another one by the Islamic Light. If your in-laws tell you that they don't like what you are wearing or etc., think about if your parents said it, would you listen? Yes. Very thought-provoking uh, tweet that our girls sometimes they get sentimental that why my in-laws are dictating me that what I need to wear and what I need to do this and that. But if your parents would have, would have said, would you not listen? You would listen. So treat and then have the same psych uh, psychological relationship with both. And um, I just noticed people sending direct attacks to people naming them. Like, why aren't the people in the panel married? And they're, what are they talking about? I just I was reading a tweet. Just to, <laughs> just to justify myself. <laughs> Continue with your uh, favorite tweets. <laughs> I think that, that part of the segment is <laughs> That's when the next segment will have different panel. Right. Because we're going to talk about the marriage. Right. So um, and then these are the two which I wanted to. Then Naveed Amal Mangla Sahib, Murabi Silsla, uh, whose father also passed away um, this week. Nala Lillahi wa Nala Rajun. His um, tweet was the article that showed in local newspaper after our Sirat conference in Peterborough. And he had the picture of that article, very, very uh, motivational. So these are the ones which I wanted to share with you. There is one or two um, other ones, but uh, we'll inshallah keep it for the next episode. Yes, uh, Super Hijabi at Muslim, <laughs> uh, Muslim 99. Uh, everyone wants their prayers to be answered on time, but few wants to pray on time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> we got to stop using the username right. so, now. <laughs> yeah. so with that said, um, you know, Jazakallah for your favorite tweets. I think there was, some of them were very, very inspiring and motivational. Um, and, uh, you know, people continue to look forward to your favorite tweets. <laughs> and uh, with that said, I believe that, uh, you know, we, we're going to be looking to wrap up our show. Um, you know, like every good show, it has to come to an end. And uh, but stay with us for the next next few se um, episodes that are that are going to be part of the uh, oncoming series. Um, I believe that we have a special video presentation after. We don't have the video presentation. Okay. So with that said, uh, we continue to ask for your prayers. Uh, please pray for the panel members that have you know volunteered their time. Pray for our volunteers uh, that come to spend time with us um, on this Friday night to to be able to put the show together. I wish that there was an opportunity where we could show you all of them, uh, but there's, you know, two different eight, rooms. Eight of them, right. Right, there's, there's about eight volunteers uh, that, are, that are making this show happen. So please remember them in your prayers and um, pray for the success of the show. Uh, you know, we, we pray that all of our viewers, uh, may, may Allah have their mercy on them, may, may the show was uh, fruitful for you, and we continue to look forward to your feedback. Jazakallah for being with us. Assalamu alaikum.